photographically, the big scenes are seductive because they sort of sum up the place. They're also probably the quickest path toward making a boring photograph. So that doesn't mean that you don't take the big scenes because we all like the remembering where we were. We all like the postcard, the we were there pictures, <laughs> those sorts of things. But then if you start to look at some of the smaller scenes, whether it's the surf on the rocks and the uh, all of the plant life that's surviving in that uh, tidal zone, whether it's the fallen trees making kind of sculpture over the rocks, whether it's the form of the rock itself, any clues you decide to give as to location and scale are discretionary. You don't have to tell a story that places any of this in space and time. That's up to you. What I would really encourage you to do is to make the visual design of whatever you're looking at be the overriding consideration in terms of what you make a photograph of. But even then, there's another issue out here. Because we might be looking at some rocks and say, wow, that's a really neat pattern. But half of the pattern is formed in our mind from what we can barely perceive is there. It's not an overtly visual thing. It's as much an intellectual perception of a fracture as it is a visual manifestation of that fracture. Out here, the shade is as important as the rock. The shapes the shadows make are as important as the shapes the rocks themselves make, or perhaps even more so to say the sunlight and shade really do define the nature of the photograph. Because after all, we're not getting a rock on the sensor, we're getting light and dark. We're riding with light, and you've got to keep that in mind. Distance doesn't matter to the camera, except where it's going to be sharp or not. What matters is your sense of what you can see in a two-dimensional representation of the light. And that may mean something small, something large, but overridingly you have to decide that the balance of the light and dark in the frame is giving you the design and the kind of emotional response to the landscape that you have in mind. And oftentimes you've got to almost strip away your intellect from imposing words, descriptions, and conclusions and try and suspend that logical, rational input and just look. When you can, close an eye because that'll remove your stereo vision and depth perception you may have been relying on to think there's a photograph disappears, the photograph also disappears. Okay? Sometimes also just squint your eye a little bit it throws your image out of focus with your eye and you can see the patterns of light and dark easily. Fair enough? Fair. Sure.